Hi, what I'd like to show you today is how to put together a quick and inexpensive way of catching rainwater in a barrel. Now, one of the things you need to do before you start this, you have to make sure that your town approves of collecting rainwater. There are actually some towns that will not let you collect it. I'm not sure why, but that's the case. So make sure that you um, do that beforehand. I'm going to leave in the description down below the parts that I use for this and what I uh, if there's anything that you can order on Amazon, I'll put that link down below. So, as you can see, here's our uh, downspout gutter. Um, the gutter on this part of the house has netting on it, which means that no debris could fall in, just water. And if you look very closely here, you'll see that's the end of the netting over there. And it does a pretty good job of not letting anything through. So, when it come down, our downspout and what you're gonna have to do is cut your gutter in that area over here, and you'll see there's some flex tape uh, on the actual piece, but this white piece over here is where the uh, water will come in, and it will separate uh, debris, which will go down straight, and then go out, of course, the downspout. And then we have over here a tube that is actually coming out of the unit and again it's a fairly large wide tube and what we have is we have it coming down over here now what i did was i wanted to go to a garden hose so i bought an adapter and again i will try to see if i can uh, give you the size of that adapter it's available at home depot but again depending upon the kit you have it'll be different sizes so if we follow this down it's going along the side of the house and again the force of the water will push it uh, we are going down a little bit of a slope, but as you can see over here, we are going down. So, the force of the water will actually push it into the rain barrel. And we'll now go on to the other side to look to see where it's connected to. Okay, so if we continue down the road here, you'll see it's up on this banister. Use some twist ties to get the hose there. And it goes next to our garden. And it will go into this 55-gallon barrel. Now. A couple of things I'll tell you about the barrel. So this barrel actually comes from a car wash. I did check the ingredients of the car wash, they're non-toxic, and again, they're food grade, so we're able to use this barrel. Make sure that any barrel that you get um, is food grade and the contents that were in it were not toxic. You definitely do not want to get something toxic because these are going to be touching your plants and will leach into your soil and then into your plants. So there are quite a few um, things to look for. One of the things you can look for in any type of container is the number with the triangle around it. So I will put on the screen which ones are okay to use. This one is a two, which means it's food grade, and that's okay to use. So, so you can check the barrel that you're using to make sure it has that symbol. It will have it on the bottom. Check it to make sure that it's food grade. Now one of the th couple of things I want to show you about this barrel. This barrel is being used uh, to collect rainwater, which will then be put into the greenhouse. I will show you in a minute how I use my drip irrigation through another barrel inside there. The garden as of now is just too big to use this to drip irrigate everything. So I'm just using this primarily for hand watering and also for uh, inside of the greenhouse. So one of the first things that I did was I drilled a hole in the barrel. And the reason I did this is because as it fills up and there's nowhere to go, it will just come out the barrel so I won't have anything overflowing. The next thing you might notice is that this is painted all black. And the reason it's painted all black, so in the winter, um, the sun will hit it, it will keep it from freezing, although we have a couple of days that aren't sunny, and we have a couple of days that are really, um, you know, in the 20s, this will freeze. So again, this will allow the water to expand without cracking the barrel. Next thing that we had to do is put on a spigot. So there are special spigots. I will put something down in the comments. This is a spigot that I, I bought specifically for rainwater. It says for rainwater barrel only, all right? and it works great, so all you gotta do is open the spigot, water comes out, and I use this primarily, again, to fill up my watering cans and other types of things that I'm gonna be used to be transferring water. So, um, putting this in is fairly simple. You just have to be able to balance it. You'll be able, you'll have to cut a hole over here, and again, with the, um, with the product will come directions on how to drill the hole. As you can see, I, I left all of these out over here, so you could actually see how much it goes to. So again, 55 gallon drum. Now, one of the things that I had to do on the top here, because I am putting, this is my submersible pump. And this is the way I get all of my water from one barrel to another. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute, but 
This is a submersible pump that I use, which has a lead, which is, will go away into the greenhouse. I used to put it up um, through the top of the greenhouse. There's a window up there, but it got a little too tedious. Um, I am thinking about maybe putting a hole over here to have it go straight in, and you'll see why in, in a few minutes. So what I do is I have the top of the barrel cut out, okay? So as you can see, I have my hose coming in, and one of the things that I have in my hose, and you can't see down to, or you see all that green there, that's all algae, that's okay, all right? If there's algae growing inside, that's perfectly fine. So we have algae in there once in a while when this empties out and we have no rain, I'll take a hose and I'll, I'll get out as much algae as I can. What I usually have at the end of my, at the end of my hose, I will usually put a stocking. And what this does is this will take out all of the big articles that may come through. Again, the um, coming down this, this tube, it's usually going to be clear of anything because again, we do have the um, mesh on top and I'll try to take a better picture of the mesh so you can see how the gutters are actually lined. But if you want to, you could actually take a uh, stocking and then put uh, at the end of your hose and then put a rubber band around that. So I keep this pretty much closed. I put a piece of plastic over it so no dirt gets in there and actually will flip a stone on top of it. It will not impede any water coming in, but it will keep it uh, good, okay? So, um, I also have a hole over here which I can tell how much water is currently in the barrel. If we follow the hose, it'll actually go into, well now it's outside, but it will go into the greenhouse. And one of the things that I've done in the greenhouse is we have another barrel here. So this barrel is the same type of barrel as the one outside. I'll tell you at the top what we do is we will actually put our hose in here and fill this up, close it up so we don't have any evaporation and we're good to go. And this, there are two things about this that I wanna first show you. You'll notice this side is black, this side is white, okay? And the reason this is black is because in the winter we want the sun to beat down on it and heat this up. It'll give a little bit of heat to the greenhouse and it will also help the water that it doesn't again freeze. This side I left um, white because I need to know how far the level is going. There's no any kind of uh, measurement besides the numbers. So I just filled this up so this is actually water all the way up to here. Okay. Now one of the things that I did was I bought a special um, a special timer. Okay and again I will put the information down below as you can see. There's the same spigot we had outside. This will connect to my drip system. This works totally on gravity. The regular drip system and timers will usually work on pressure. We have a, a hose, we turn on our hose, and then these guys will just work on the pressure, okay? So this is all working totally on gravity. So as you see, this is all going down, and then it goes out to the bed, okay? So I can run this for, let's say, an hour every day just to make sure the bed is all wet. Again, when it's hotter outside, I'll see what I want to do. One of the things that I had to do was I had to raise the barrel much higher than the, than the uh, bed itself. So I used these blocks over here. Okay, so just cinder blocks that are piled up. You can put them as high as you want to. But again, I have a nice enough angle for gravity. So it comes out of here. This is my timer when it goes on and goes off, and then it will go into my drip system. Now, besides the timers, um, everything else was pretty inexpensive the barrels I got for twenty dollars each again I had to wash them out this will also this also has algae on it because the Sun does hit it so again nothing to worry about when these uh, barrels come will go all the way down we haven't had rain for a while I will then take uh, a hose and, and uh, they're pretty light I'll take them outside and I'll wash them out inside so again that's how we're using this in the greenhouse and also to fill up the different uh, bottles that we want to to have rainwater in if you'll notice these uh, cinder blocks that we have underneath are actually tilting the barrel a little bit this way. And the reason we're doing that is because the spigot is over there. So we want to make sure that we have the most water coming out uh, towards the end. And that's why we uh, will actually, I took a level and made sure that we do have an angle here. So the water will come to the front and you'll notice if, uh, we, we couldn't put the spigot down all the way on the bottom because it doesn't work. So you have about this much water left in it afterwards. One last thing with this, you do need power. Um, and if you want to use a submersible pump, there are other ways of getting the water out, or you could actually just raise this up in the garden and put this totally into the garden. There are people who have um, taken these and they've daisy chained them, which means we'll put a hole over here, a nice big hole, put a PVC pipe over here, have another um, barrel over here where that will fill up and then I'll have another one. So they could daisy chain them. So I may do that this year to have more water available to me or it hasn't been done yet. 
So that's pretty much how you um, inexpensively can get rainwater, fill up your barrels. If you want to water your garden with the rainwater, this is a great uh, way to do it. Again, I will leave all of the products that I bought in the description below. And again, this is something that you might want to try doing if you have the space for it. As you know, we try to do everything inexpensively when we grow our backyard garden and also in terms of spacing. We don't have much space to do everything, so we need to put things right next to each other and save the space. Hope you enjoyed the video and hope you will subscribe. And if you like the video, please hit like and happy gardening.